Okay guys, so we're talking algebra and we're going to start with making sure that we recognize that there is a pattern in algebra. Now if you can look and find patterns in algebra, you'll be very, very successful. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw your attention to this pattern right here and you'll notice that you have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Well, we know it doesn't take a genius to know that you're going up by 2 each time. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a table of values. Table of values. Now, t becomes the term number. And if you look at this one, this is the first number inside of my pattern, so it becomes term number one. This becomes the second number, because it's the second number in the list. This becomes the third number, because it's the third number in the list. Now, you'll notice that I'm just taking the number, one, two, three, four, and I'm just putting them down in an order here, because that's the way that they are. This becomes number one, number two, number three, number four, number five number six and then that pattern can keep going all the way up to term 10 or all the way up even higher to term 100 whatever it is so the term number is always going to go under the t side now the value is the actual number itself so in term one we have a value of two and value just simply means how much that number is worth term number two the value is four Term number three, the value is six, so on and so forth. And if I keep going, the fourth number is eight, the fifth number in this pattern is ten, so on and so forth. Now what you can see here is that we're adding two each time. If I take two and add it to two, I get four, which is the second term. If I take four and add two to it, I get six, which becomes the third term. So the third number should be six, and it just so happens that the third number is six in this case. Now let me get rid of some of these lines here so I can draw your attention to what it is that I need you to draw attention to. When you're creating algebra, you need to use a letter. Now notice that what we've done here is we have a pattern of plus two each time. We're adding two every single time. So when I'm creating a pattern rule, what I need to do is I need to move the pattern rule, and if I'm adding two each time, I need to move that two to the front of my algebraic expression. That two that's being added, it doesn't change. I'm always adding 2, at least that's what I found. If I continue on with my pattern, there's nothing here that tells me that I'm going to add 3 all of a sudden, or nothing that says I'm going to add 4 all of a sudden. So I'm just going to keep adding 2, adding 2, adding 2. Now, where the algebra comes in is that this t right here can change. You'll notice that up here, I said, oh, I could go to 10, or I could go all the way to 100. I don't know exactly what pattern it or what term it is that I want to use. So algebraically, if I just put 2n or 2t or 2l or 2 whatever, any letter can go into here. I'm going to use n because I like the, the n for the number. Now in order to tell whether or not I have the proper pattern rule is I have to look at my pattern times the term number and does it equal the value. So this, if I write this out, this should say pattern times the term equals the value. If I have a pattern of 2 and I multiply it by 1, so 2 times 1, I get a value of 2. Now let's see if that worked. I have 2, the pattern of 2, so I'm adding 2 each time. I'm multiplying it by the first term the term number 1, and then I'm, I get a value of 2. Now, what does that mean exactly? Well, it means I added 2 one time. So if I took a group of 2, and I had a single group of 2, okay, if my first term is a single one solitary group of 2, I get a total number of 2. Did it work? Yeah, it did. So let's look at the next one. Let me just make this a little bit larger, and I'm going to try this again. What if I check the fifth term? Because I don't know exactly what term it is that I want to use. So if I check the fifth term, I have a pattern of two, and I'm plugging five into the term number, which is this guy, so I'd go all the way down to five. I know by looking at my table of values that the answer should be ten. So two times my term number of five equals 10. 
So is that the correct value? Yes, it is. I've got it correct. So my pattern rule of simply 2n is correct. Now if I look at something a little bit different, let's say I start with 3 this time. Again, I'll do a table of values chart because I like using them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 6, 9, 12. My fourth number in this line is 12. Just drawing your attention to that. Fourth number is 12. Now I need to try and find out what the pattern is. Well, if I look at this, I know that if I take 3 and add 3 to it, I will get 6. So 3 plus 3 equals 6. Then if I take 6 and add 3 to that, I will get 9. And if I take 9 and add 3 to that, I will get 12. So I know that my pattern, because I'm adding 3 each time, that's going to start my pattern rule. That becomes 3n. 3 times the term number. Now, if we remember from what we did last time, the pattern times the term should equal the value. Okay, it should equal the value, so let's take a look. If I plug in the first term, 3n, well, that's 3 times 1 because it's the first term. That gives me a 3. 3 times 1 is 3. Is that the value? Yes, it is. Let me look at 3 times 4. So I'm looking now at the fourth term, and the value should be 12. 3 times 4 equals 12. Well, then I know that I've got the right pattern rule because it's working that way. Now, it does get a little trickier, so I'm going to show you something. Let's say I start with a pattern that looks like this. Again, I will do a table of values. My first number is 7. My second number is 9. My third number is 11. And my fourth number is 13. Now, notice that if I start at 7 and it goes to 9, I'm only adding 2. And if I add 2 to 9, I get 11. And if I add 2 to 11, I get 13. Notice that my pattern rule now starts with 2. It continues with 2n. Okay, 2 times a number. That's the pattern, so that pattern gets moved up there. But if I look at term, the pattern times the term equaling a value, the value, I should have a number that if I multiply 2 times 1, it should equal this value of 7. Let's see if that works. If I go 2n, which is 2 times 1, because my first term, that equals 2. But now I have a problem, though, because my value here is 2, and it should be 7. So I've got to do something that's a little bit different. I have to make it equal 7. Now, how do I do that? Well, it's simple. I'm going to change the math, and I'll show you how that's done. All right, now that those are all out of the way, 11 and 13, 2n is my pattern rule. If I know that 2 times 1 equals 2, I have to get it to equal 7, so I'm going to add something to it, add or subtract. In this case, 2 is lower than 7, so I need to add something to make 2 equal 7. So if I draw that up here, here's 2 times 1. I have one group of 2, but I need it to equal 7 total. So I'm going to add five more. And if you count them, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So 2n plus 5 equals my value of 7. Now, will that work for the next one? Do I know that I have the right pattern rule? Let me check. If I take 2 and multiply it by the second term, 2 times 2, it should equal 9. Well, I know just by looking at this that 2 times 2 does not equal 9. 2 times 2 equals 4. But if I add the 5 again, that same 5 that I added up here, I get 2 times 2 is 4 plus 5 equals 9. And there's the value that I needed. Let me try that again. We'll try it with a bigger one. We'll try it with a, a slightly larger one. Let me wipe this. Let's say I have 2n. My value is 2n plus 5. So there's my pattern rule. The pattern rule is plus 5, 2n plus 5. And let's say I want to check the 10th term, 10th term. So now I'm going to plug the 10 into the number, the t, into the n. 
it's going to be 2 times 10 plus 5. 2 times 10 is 20 plus 5 equals 25. And if I did that table of values chart where I had t and v, first one, 7, 2 is a 9, 3, 11, 4 was 13, sorry, 2, 2, 2, 13. I'm going to add by 2 each time, 15, 17, 19, 21, 23, and 25 down at the bottom, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Notice that term 10, I multiplied it by 10, because that's the term number I multiplied by, I still get the value of 25. So this is creating a pattern rule in algebra. I want you to work on this, creating a pattern rule, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to get your teacher to show you a bunch of patterns. I need you just to come up with what you believe the pattern rule is, and we'll continue to work on this until you get it, and then we won't even worry about solving them until I get back. If you have any questions, put your hand up. I have absolute faith in your teacher. Good luck.